the very next line reads that you can know the seer the prophet only by his fruits meaning only by the effect he has upon you instead if you are insistent upon knowing a prophet by his clothing then you will always be mistaken because it is known what the clothing of the previous prophet was and you have an image of that clothing you like that it belongs to your prophet clothing means the entire set of behavior mannerisms language all that which can be exhibited it is so easy to copy it it is so easy to replicate it and fool gullible audiences the next flower would not look and feel and smell like the previous one even if they are arising from the same root and belong to the same tree even to the same branch yet some difference would necessarily be there but we look no deeper than clothing all about us is just skin deep and when you are concerned only with the clothing then someone can just wear the acceptable kind of clothing and deceive you hmm? what do i mean by clothing name talk walk the total set of exhibition all the exhibits jesus is giving us a sutra to identify the real prophet he is saying do not know him by comparison his clothing his appearance will in no way be similar to the kind of clothing you have seen to the kind of clothing you are familiar with you can know him only in one way and that way is see what happens to you in his presence if you feel peace if you feel drawn if you feel a sudden mystical void arising in your heart then you must know that you are with the right one otherwise not so you are, we have to follow our feelings the absence of feelings all your feelings are feelings of disquiet in the presence of the prophet all your feelings subside they calm down and relax when in couple when you are kind of disturbed because there is something happening that hurts you huh? um, you 
can take it as a message from God to be aware that you are in some pattern happening and then it's uh, a chance to, to take conscious of this. But at the same time, uh, at the same time um, we are disturbed. So it's not a good way to, to be with someone who is hurting you. One is not... Someone who is frightening you. One can never be disturbed by the external, by somebody. The external is the internal. So the external, the somebody who appears to hurt you, is not really hurting you but only exposing the hurt already existing in your mind. I often ask, can I hurt empty space? But I can hurt a wall. I can hit a wall. I can bring down a wall. But nobody can hurt empty space. It is always something within you very prepared to be hurt that gets hurt. If your mind is clear, clean like a void, there is no question of you ever getting hurt. The other only exposes the disturbance existing in the subconscious. He is never really the cause of the disturbance for the simple reason that the other, the outer is the inner. When the outer is the inner, then the cause of inner disturbance will also be inner. When you get hurt, do not look outwards. Do not say that that fellow hurt me, that situation hurt me. Turn inwards and ask yourself, what was it in you that was so vulnerable to hurt? Only the ego gets hurt. Only the indefensible needs defense. And you can never totally defend it. In spite of all your protection, it keeps getting hurt. 